This is my robotic safe cracker. I started building it after my brother-in-law called me up and asked for help unlocking his safe. I have this first prototype working pretty well, so it's time to put it to the test. So I had my wife set a completely random combination and I recorded it so that you will know what it is, but my robot and I will have no idea. While this is doing its thing, let me bring you up to speed on how I built this safe cracking robot. I showed you this safe in the last video. I bought it because I needed something to practice on while I'm developing this device. I didn't want to have to drive all the way to my brother-in-law's house every time I need to test something. But the problem with this safe is that it has a fixed combination. There's no way to manually change the code. So to fix that problem, I bought this dial replacement and it has a little key that you insert and you can actually change the combination to be whatever I want. So once I get a little more confident, I can actually stick the key in there and set a random combination that I don't actually know. And that will be a real true test of my device because I won't actually know the combination. Unfortunately, I can't put the replacement dial onto this safe, so I designed sort of a dummy safe door and I ordered those parts from Sencut Sen. Here's my mock-up safe door. It's made out of a quarter inch steel plate and this sucker is heavy. They were also able to tap the little holes in here which will save me a ton of time when assembling this thing. So let's go ahead and put that replacement dial on my mock-up door. Let's do some quick math. Each wheel has 100 different numbers, and there are three wheels, so that means 100 times 100 times 100 means there are 1 million total possible combinations. I'm trying to make the dial spin as fast as possible, but even if I could try one combination every second, that would still take like 11 and a half days to try all million combinations. That is way too long. I even got a whole bunch of comments in the last video saying how this was gonna be an impossible task because it would just take too long. However, I have some ideas on how I can reduce that number and it involves a little bit of math. In order to open the combination, you need to have the gates in all three wheels align perfectly so that the latch slides inside. On some safes, that third wheel is divided into like 12 parts and instead of having one real gate, they'll have 11 false gates and then that 12th one will be the real one. You can actually test this yourself. You can feel that latch falling into those false gates. And so that actually eliminates a whole bunch of possibilities for that third number. So instead of there being 100 possibilities, there's actually only just 12. If you spend a few minutes, you can actually determine which of these gates is the real one because the real one will have a slightly bigger opening than the false gates. This means you can actually determine what that third number is. So there's only one possibility. Now instead of 1 million total possible combinations, there's only 10,000. I was actually able to find that third number on my big gray safe that I showed in the last video using this method. Unfortunately, the replacement dial in the mock-up safe door that I just built doesn't have this exploit, so I am going to have to try all 100 combinations on that final number. But that's okay because there are other ways that I can reduce the total possible combinations that I'm going to have to try. You may have noticed that when you're using a dial combination, you don't have to get it exactly on the number. You can be a little bit off and still have the safe open. I'm going to use this to my advantage. I did a little bit of testing and I figured out that I can be about a half a number off and still have the combination open. So instead of having to try the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I can actually just try 0 0.5 because that covers 0 and 1 and then I can try 2.5 because that covers 2 and 3 and I can try 4.5 because that covers 4 and 5. So you do have a plan. Yeah, Mr. White. Yes, yeah, science. Okay. So that reduces each wheel from 100 combinations down to only 50. So now instead of 1 million total combinations, I only have 50 times 50 times 50, which is 125,000. The other thing that's gonna save me a ton of time is not resetting the combination after every attempt. If I do this correctly, I can try all of the third numbers and then go back carefully and just change the second number and then try all of the third numbers again. And I can keep doing this without having to reset the combination every single time. 
At this point, I'm ready to move on to building the frame for this robotic safe cracker. In addition to the mock-up safe door, I also ordered these plates that I'm gonna assemble into a frame. So I need to mount the motor to this top piece and then connect the two pieces using some aluminum tube. If I were to use a normal screw to fasten these two plates together, the head of the screw would stick out beyond the surface of this plate and it wouldn't sit flush against the safe. So I had them countersink those holes so that I could use a countersunk screw like this. And that way I still have a flat surface that I can put against the door of the safe. The prototype that I built in part one of this video series used an ESP8266 microcontroller along with an OLED display. That setup would have worked just fine, but I found that I was already kind of running out of GPIO pins on that microcontroller. And also the OLED screen wasn't that big. It couldn't display that much information. So I did a little more research and I found this microcontroller. This is an ESP32 microcontroller with a color TFT display already built on it. So it's much smaller. It has way more GPIO pin and a lot more processing power. So I think moving forward, I'm gonna use this for my prototype. My plan is to write sort of a little simple menu on the microcontroller that I can select different settings and start the process of solving the combination. So to do all of that, I'm going to to use an encoder that has a push button built into it. One of the things I need to consider when using an encoder like this is switch bouncing. When you press a mechanical switch like this, to you it might feel like you're pressing down and it's making contact immediately, but the mechanics inside of the switch will actually make and break contact a whole bunch of times really quickly before it settles into that on state. You can think of it like dropping a basketball. It's gonna bounce several times before it comes to rest. As a human, we can't detect all of that switch bouncing, but a microcontroller will interpret every single one of those bounces as a button press, and we don't want that. So to get rid of that switch bouncing, there's a couple of options. We can use hardware debouncing, or we can use software debouncing, or we can use a combination of both. To get rid of that bouncing using hardware, we can use a capacitor and a resistor to create a low pass filter. That low pass filter will attenuate or kind of get rid of all of those high frequency changes and only let low frequency changes like button presses through. 
Because I'm an electrical engineer, I tend to favor hardware solutions over software solutions, but the same effect can be achieved using software. What you end up doing in software is that you detect that first button press and then you ignore any button presses for a given amount of time, and so it lets that switch settle into its steady state before allowing a second button press. I'm actually going to use a combination of both hardware debouncing and software debouncing to get a really clean signal. I wanted to attach this device to the safe door using magnets. I even designed some holes in the base plate where I could install some 15 millimeter neodymium magnets. But as soon as I tried that for the first time, it was very clear that these magnets weren't gonna be strong enough. So I kinda had to go to a plan B, and I ended up just buying a really massive neodymium magnet, and I 3D printed a little bracket for this to attach to the base plate. This is kind of an ugly solution, but it's gonna work for now, and maybe in the future I can revisit this problem. I also 3D printed this little bracket and I will mount the microcontroller on here. Okay, I take back what I said a minute ago. I'm actually going to ditch that huge magnet because I found some smaller bar magnets that I'm going to mount around the perimeter. I need to develop an algorithm so that the motor spins to the right position and checks every single combination, and I also need to detect when the lock is open. Now you may think it's as simple as just setting the dial to 000 and checking the lock, and if that doesn't work, then incrementing that last number. This is true for the first and the third number because we get to those numbers by turning the dial counterclockwise. But for that middle number, we'll actually have to turn the dial clockwise, which means we'll have to start at the top and work our way to the bottom. I also want to make sure that as I turn the dial, I'm not changing the wheels that I already set. That third number has to start and stop in relation to the first and the second wheel so that those drive pins don't end up pushing the first and second wheel. I've spent a ton of time playing around with this, trying to get a good understanding so that I can get an algorithm that works. I've got numbers scribbled on paper all over my office. I'm like one step away from turning into Russell Crowe from that movie A Beautiful Mind. Because the last thing I want to happen is for this thing to fail like 10 or 12 hours into an auto dialing session because I didn't think of some edge case. One of the big questions I need to have answered is how long I should expect this whole thing to take. So I'm going to start this auto dialer and I'm gonna time how long it takes to try all 50 possible third numbers. I could easily have my program just sort of spit out the time on there, but I'm just gonna use my phone instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this. It will first reset the combination and then I'll hit start on the stopwatch. You can see I was a little bit late on hitting the stop button, but it was about 46 or 47 seconds to try 50 combinations. So that's a little less than one second per combination. If you do the math, that will take up to 32 hours to try all 125,000 combinations. On average, it will only take about half of that, so like 16 hours to find the right combination. With that being said, it's time. I need to put this safe cracking robot to the test. So I had my wife set a completely random combination and I recorded it so that you will know what it is, but my robot and I will have no idea. When I plug it in, I should get a little splash screen that comes up. And then I'm presented with the speed selection menu. So then I can use the encoder to select slow, medium, or fast. Then the screen asks me to set my zero position and I can see that it's a little bit off. So all I need to do is twist this encoder knob until I'm happy with that starting point. And then when I want to start the session, I just hit the button. And I forgot to mention, since I'm using a Wi-Fi microcontroller, I actually set up a Telegram bot that will message me when the auto dialer is done and the message will contain the correct combination. I even added some quick response buttons so that I can control the auto dialer remotely. For example, when it's done and it's sent me the right combination, I can ask it to relock the safe. This means that I don't have to sit here and babysit the machine or come back and check on it. I can just go about my business and I'll get a little notification on my phone when it's done.
All right, it's the next day, and I just got a message on Telegram saying that the robot has finished and that it found the combination. The number that it came up with was 72.5, 18.5, and 42.5. Remember, I'm using those half numbers so that I don't have to check every single number because those half numbers will cover the number above it as well as the number below it. All right, let me get a piece of paper here and write down all of the possible combinations. It actually doesn't matter because I can open up the safe using those half numbers and it would be just fine, but it would be really fun to open up that piece of paper and find uh, the actual combination here on this page. All right, so I have the official piece of paper that my wife wrote the number down on, and let's see. 73, 19, 42. That is exactly one of the numbers that I guessed on there. That's pretty awesome. This is totally a formality, but I wanna actually remove this and dial in the combination. It'll give me that sense of satisfaction. Click. That's awesome. I've had a ton of people reach out saying that they're interested in building one of these for themselves. So I'm going to release all of the CAD and the code and the design files on my GitHub as open source. Join me in part three of this video series where I take this thing to my brother-in-law's house and let it go to work for real. My plan is to live stream that auto dialing session. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, be sure to do that so you don't miss the live stream. This isn't the first crazy project I've built on this channel. You know those one wheel self-balancing skateboards? I designed and built one of those entirely from scratch. You can watch the whole build process right here in this video series.